the Israelites settled in Egypt. 45. Joseph makes himself known. He kisses all his brothers and sends them to his father. 46. Jacob's journey to Egypt and meeting with Joseph. 47. Severe famine arrived in the land of Egypt and Canaan. Jacob and descendants exalted in Goshen. 48. Jacob blesses Manasseh and Ephraim. Jacob meets his son Joseph. A glorious meeting day is coming after the trials and difficult situations. The Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. But the absolute will of God for Israel was in Canaan, not Egypt. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 5. God's generous will allows them to settle in Goshen, and as far as possible, He blesses them there. Then Joseph couldn't control himself before all those who stood before him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. There stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wept aloud. The Egyptians heard, and the house of Pharaoh heard. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? His brothers couldn't answer him, for they were terrified at his presence. Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. They came near. He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now don't be grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years the famine has been in the land, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant in the earth, and to save you alive by a great deliverance. So now it wasn't you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and tell him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't wait. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you will be near to me, you, your children, your children's children, your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will nourish you, for there are yet five years of famine lest you come to poverty, you and your household and all that you have. Behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that you have seen. You shall hurry and bring my father down here. He fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. He kissed all his brothers and wept on them. After that his brothers talked with him. The report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, do this. Load your animals and go. Travel to the land of Canaan. Take, take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded to do this. Take wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Also don't concern yourselves about your belongings, for the good of all of the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so. Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provision for the way. To all of them he gave each man changes of clothing, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of clothing. To his father he sent after this manner ten donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and provision for his father by the way. So he sent his brothers away, and they departed. He said to them, See that you don't quarrel on the way. They went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan to Jacob their father. They told him, saying, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. His heart fainted, for he didn't believe them. They told him all the words of Joseph which he had said to them. When he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. 
Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Israel traveled with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. He said, Here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid to go down into Egypt, for there I will make of you a great nation. I will go down with you into Egypt. I will also surely bring you up again. Joseph will close your eyes. Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, their little ones and their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. They took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and he brought all his seed with him into Egypt. These are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, the sons of Reuben, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, the sons of Judah, Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Issachar, Tola, Puva, Iob, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun, Sered, Elan, and Shalil. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob in Padan Aram with his daughter Dinah. All the souls of his sons and his daughters were thirty-three. The sons of Gad, Ziphion, Hagi, Shunai, Esbon, Irai, Arodai, and Arelai. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Bariah, and Sarah their sister. The sons of Bariah, Eber, and Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, even sixteen souls. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin. To Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Ashenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore to him. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gira, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupim, Hupim, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob. All the souls were fourteen. The son of Dan, Hushim. The sons of Naphtali, Jazil, Gunai, Jezer, and Shilim. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob. All the souls were seven. All the souls who came with Jacob into Egypt, who were his direct descendants besides Jacob's sons' wives, all the souls were sixty-six. The sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, who came into Egypt, were seventy. He sent Judah before him to Joseph, to show the way before him to Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel his father in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's house, I will go up and speak with Pharaoh and will tell him, My brothers and my father's house, who are in the land of Canaan, have come to me. These men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of cattle, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. It will happen when Pharaoh summons you, and will say, What is your occupation? That you shall say, Your servants have been keepers of cattle from our youth, even until now, both we and our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians." 
Then Joseph went in and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, with their flocks, their herds, and all that they own, have come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. From among his brothers he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? They said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers. They said to Pharaoh, We have come to live as foreigners in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now therefore please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Make your father and your brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. If you know any able men among them, then put them in charge of my cattle. Joseph brought in Jacob his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are one hundred thirty years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Joseph placed his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Joseph nourished his father, his brothers, and all of his father's household with bread according to their families. There was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, for the grain which they bought, and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. When the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence, for our money fails? Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you food for your cattle, if money fails. They brought their cattle to Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, and for the flocks, and for the herds, and for the donkeys, and he fed them with bread in exchange for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came to him the second year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord how our money is all spent, and the herds of cattle are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants to Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land won't be desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine was severe on them, and the land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he moved them to the cities from one end of the border of Egypt even to the other end of it. Only he didn't buy the land of the priest, for the priest had a portion from Pharaoh, and ate their portion which Pharaoh gave them. That is why they didn't sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh. Behold, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. It will happen at the harvest that you shall give a fifth to Pharaoh, and four parts will be your own, for the seed of the field, for your food, for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. They said, You have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. Joseph made it a statute concerning the land of Egypt to this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth. Only the land of the priest alone didn't become Pharaoh's. Israel lived in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they got themselves possessions therein and were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were one hundred forty-seven years. The time drew near that Israel must die, and he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Please don't bury me in Egypt, but when I sleep with my fathers, you shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burying place. 
He said, I will do as you have said. He said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. Israel bowed himself on the bed's head. It happened after these things that someone said to Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. He took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Someone told Jacob and said, Behold, your son Joseph comes to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat on the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a company of peoples, and will give this land to your seed after you for an everlasting possession. Now your two sons, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you into Egypt, are mine, Ephraim and Manasseh, even as Reuben and Simeon will be mine. Your issue, who you have become father of after them, will be yours. They will be called after the name of their brothers and their inheritance. As for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when there was still some distance to come to Ephrath, and I buried her there in the way to Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, They are my sons whom God has given me here. He said, Please bring them to me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he couldn't see. He brought them near to him, and he kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I didn't think I would see your face, and behold, God has let me see your seed also. Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near to him. Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. He blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God who has fed me all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. He held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. His father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also will become a people, and he also will be great. However, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his seed will become a multitude of nations. He blessed them that day, saying, In you will Israel bless, saying, God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. He said Ephraim before Manasseh. Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you again to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Verse 